Mariners and Diamondbacks just cooked up another trade on Thanksgiving Eve. And this one is sending a Eugenio Bruh. Suarez to Arizona. And the Mariners are receiving Sebi Zavala and Carlos Vargas, a right-handed pitcher who's a reliever who's 24 years old. This is going to be my instant reaction to this trade. We're going to break it down a little bit, and then Joe and I will talk more about it on the podcast tomorrow. But first, let's just talk about how this started. First of all, Boob Nightingale said the Seattle Mariners acquire catcher Sebi Zavala from the Arizona Diamondbacks. Cool. Whatever. Sounds good, Bob. That was at 1044. 15 minutes later, Boob tweeted, Zavala is part of a bigger trade with the Mariners the two sides have discussed for weeks. And then that is where, of course, we all start to have the anxiety. Who's going on their way to Arizona? Who are the Mariners getting back? And a lot of people mentioned Gino Suarez because, yeah, the Diamondbacks need a third baseman. And the Mariners, I guess, need a backup catcher in Sebi Zavala, I guess, and a reliever in Carlos Vargas. I don't know. And then Divish tweeted, per sources, Mariners getting Carlos Vargas and Sebi Zavala for Gino Suarez. Okay, let's talk about this. First, we take a quick look at Gino's numbers. Gino had a rough year, hitting 232, 323, 391 with just a 101 OPS+. Plus. He did hit himself 22 home runs with 96 RBI, but he struck out 214 times, the most in the MLB and the most in his career. Gino Savant page showed that he was really, really good defensively. He should have won himself a gold glove, wasn't even in consideration. Obviously, the whiff and K rates were very, very low. And then his sweet spot percentage and chase rate were okay. His barrel percentage was decent. But overall, Gino had a down year. Again, very good defensively and very good vibes guy. This really sucks, in my opinion. Eugenio Suarez was becoming one of my favorite players on the Mariners. I thought that he really had a chance to be there for a while. Good vibes only. I was thinking about getting a Gino jersey. I guess I'll be cheaper now. But this just really freaking sucks. Sebi Zavala is 30 years old. He'd be the backup catcher, I guess, if they don't want to bring back Tom Murphy if for some godforsaken reason. He's ARB eligible in 2025. He's a free agent in 2028, so he's under contract for quite a while here. In a whole seven games with the Diamondbacks in 2023, Zavala put up a 357, 471, 429 slash line with a 149 OPS plus. But with the White Sox, he was god awful at 155, 207, 304 with a 37 OPS plus, all culminating to a 171 batting average in 2023 between 73 games. Zavala, I guess, is a glove first catcher. You can see he's okay here defensively, and his offensive metrics are god awful. So, hey, maybe the Mariners are looking at Sebi Zavala and saying, this guy is a backup catcher. Although in 2022, he did in 205 plate appearances hit 270, 347, 382 with a 729 OPS plus. So maybe that's what they're looking at. Last year, Carlos Vargas spent a lot of time in AAA with a 7.02 ERA. Uh, he pitched in 38 games with a 42.1 innings pitched. He, uh, he he came up to the majors and pitched in five games, 4.2 innings pitched with a 5.79 ERA. Gotta love that with a WHIP of nearly 2.0. His whiff percentage was pretty high, his K percentage was pretty high, and his ground ball rate was pretty high. So here's the thing with the Mariners and relievers, right? Like, I'm never going to count the Mariners out when it comes to getting a reliever because the Mariners have shown they're very, very good at turning them into something special. And the underlying numbers here for Vargas means the Mariners think that there's something that they can tweak in Vargas that's going to make him maybe a back end of the bullpen guy, but just as easily he could be a quad A guy who never sees any real time at the major league level if i'm being honest with you there's one reason and one reason only that this trade makes sense to me right now let's take a look at it so gino is owed 11 million dollars in 2024 and he has a club option for 15 million in 2025 i i mean overall that is a basically a two-year 26 million dollar deal for a guy who could be hitting you 30 home runs again strikes out a lot and the mayors have talked ad nauseum about how they want to cut down on strikeouts but this is kind of a steal of a deal for Gino Suarez, especially if he gets back to 2022 and his 2023 form, you know, maybe we don't see that again. Kind of a steal of a deal. Sebi Zavala is pre-arb in 2024. The Mariners would have him through 2027, so obviously cuts down on some money there. And of course, Carlos Vargas, seeing as how he only pitched in like five games, is also pre-arb. The Mariners would have him through like 2028, 2029, something weird like that. Obviously, there's still time for the Mariners to do something about this, but you just lost a fan favorite third baseman, a guy who everyone really, really liked, who was on a cheaper contract for a possible backup catcher and a project arm in Carlos Vargas. This is a pure salary dump for the Mariners. Are they going to use that money? That's what matters. If they use that money to go out and sign Matt Chapman, no. 
then that is an absolute failure by Justin Hollander and Jerry Depoto. That money needs to be used elsewhere, going out and getting a bigger name free agent, whether that be somebody like a Yoshinobu Yamamoto or signing, I don't know, Shohei, for example. That money needs to be used, and it needs to be used correctly. Otherwise, this is an absolute horrible trade, in my opinion. I don't care what anybody says. Trading a Eugenio Suarez, a good vibes guy who everybody loved and adored, for two beer in a can guys who you could find anywhere on the free agent market makes absolutely no sense to me unless you're using that money somewhere else. I know that we're mad in the comments and I'm mad right now too. There's a lot going on right now for the Mariners and it just makes no sense to me why they made this trade. I mean, when we have friend of the show Aaron Hughes, a diehard Diamondbacks fan, telling us that we got screwed, yeah, the Mariners, they got screwed. Joe and I will talk more about this on the podcast for tomorrow that we'll release on Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you guys. Hopefully, we'll be able to clear our heads and think a little bit straighter moving forward. But hey, what the hell? Here we are. Mariners first big trade. Joe and I were both wrong. It was on the 22nd, not the 27th or the 2nd. I appreciate you guys watching this one and go Mariners.